This video is brought to you by Huber Engineered Woods, the makers of Advantech and Zip System. You know what time it is? It's time to start framing the Great Great Wall. That is all LSL, some LDL headers, and miscellaneous stuff. Stay tuned, this is gonna be fun. I'm really looking forward to this. Can't really get to the button though with that thing on top. All right guys, welcome back to the channel. We are about to frame the Great Great Wall. Why do we call it the Great Great Wall? It's pretty great. Because it's pretty great. Yeah. Okay, let me walk you through it. It's gonna go two stories high, come over here, and at this corner, it's gonna come up to this point, down to single story, no, you're fine, and then here. We've got a camera going, we've got a camera going, this is the biggest wall we've ever framed, and we're gonna side it, hang windows, trim it, and then the crane, I think, if they'll get back to me, should be out here Monday. So, oh, by the way, what time is it, Kyle? It's gotta be like 9.45. It is 9.49. You were close? I'm only four minutes off. Four minutes off, yep. He's not calibrated. Nope. So, okay. The reason I mentioned the time is I'll update it throughout the day. This is the fourth time that we have framed this house plan. The first two times we were able to lift the wall with a forklift because we had access. The last time it was with a crane and this time it will be with a crane and you can see why. Right there to my left, there is no access for the forklift. Kyle and I have been framing as basically a two person crew since 2008. This rake wall technique that we have it works great for two people. It's actually a little difficult to get three people into the mix, but we're gonna have to work on that because we're getting older. So while I lay out the bottom plates, Kyle starts to basically take care of all of the prep. He grabs and cuts headers. Uh, anything that he can cut to the math, he'll cut. That includes top plates, overhangs, soffit material, etc. Now with the great, great wall, because our longest rake is far longer, I think it's like 32 feet roughly, yeah, something like that. We don't have material that long, so that means the top plates are gonna be spliced. So let me explain what I just did. I laid out double king studs and a trimmer for the window, and I hid one of those double king studs in the partition, or basically where the intersecting wall will meet, this wall. That gives me backing, but it also leaves me a cavity for insulation, and I'll show that a little bit later. Then what you just saw me do is lay out double king stud and trimmer, and the reason for the double king studs is because this wall is so tall, we want the double king studs to make the wall stiff as it goes up. So we're not just building this wall to deal with earthquakes or high winds. We're also designed and building this wall so that we can lift it safely. And when you see the wall go up in the next video, nice and stiff. On this end, I'm just cutting the plate because my lines on the floor are perfect. Remember from previous videos, we made everything square and parallel. So any adjustments that needed to happen are reflected in those black lines and then double, double stud there so that the hold down has more meat for the nailing. So that's why I just marked the partitions in place because all of our layout, it, everything got taken into account when we snapped lines. So when it comes to plating, we're just transferring. Remember in the other video, we talked about how we're just making a bigger version of the blueprints on the floor. That's all it is and then we're extruding everything or we're making it three-dimensional by adding stud lengths to it. So that's all that is. It makes plating really easy because all of the thinking was done, well, for the most part, when we snap lines. Center mark, seven foot nine sixteen. I know a guy that looks a lot like me that has goofed up window layout before where it was only after the house was finished you realized the window was off center, so. Uh, that's why I go a little slower and I double check everything now. So I'm gonna go single trimmer on the 6020. Single trimmer, single king stud? I think I'll go double. Double king stud, okay. Unless you think that, I mean, I'm close to one there. And layout. That's layout cool. would be. That's, that's cool with me, I'll just. Add it to the list, it'll be 14 instead of 12. I'm cutting. Is that a waste? I don't think so. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. And now, and those are inch and three quarter. Are they? The studs. Okay, so the trimmer's good. I'm glad you said that. 
Okay. Okay, so my trimmers are good, but I'll relay out those. And that's why two heads are better than one. <laughs> so LVL studs, okay. LSL studs, okay, inch and three quarter wide, mm -hmm. and then five and a half inches deep, just like our regular Doug fur studs or plate material or two by six. Okay, so we'll make that king, king, trimmer, 6020. 6020 means six foot wide, two feet tall. What I'm laying out there is a six by six glue lamb column that's gonna support the ridge beam. And you can see that down in that pony wall, that's gonna transfer all the way to the concrete. Oh. Okay, so we have two windows upstairs. It's probably 23911 is okay. what I have written down. I'll mark this through and that way we can snap it later. Okay. Okay. So. Yeah, 3911. We have a 4010 up in the bathroom. Okay. Okay. So. And then. And then I have a 4040 here. I'm just gonna go off the plan. Okay, so four windows total? Yeah. Okay. Five foot six to the center. And let's just add these up. So once you lay out the main floor windows, then you gotta make sure that you get the upper floor windows, keeping in mind that there is no upper floor yet. So you just, yeah, so you get it. I'm slowing way down, I'm slow way down. And for a slow guy like me, that's really slow. 13 foot eight. This is the outside of my two story wall. So five foot six. 404. And then those trimmers will want to make tall because it's a fiberglass. Upstairs. Yeah. Okay. I got to see how this works because. Yeah, we'll just dial all that in. Yeah. Cause it's a 2-0. I think I had to kick this last time. Like, do we care if it's perfectly centered in the upstairs bedroom? Because I could put a trimmer on this side. This is main floor, this is upper floor. Or, like if I do, I think this might be what we did last time. If that's the edge of my window, I could just do trimmer and king and I could get rid of this double king because we're so close. And then that scoots over. No, that stays. I can double king there. We'll add backing later. Then I would have trimmer king, and then I'd have like inch and a half gap. Okay. So there's no point in this guy. And that could be a single king. Oh, I get what you're saying. I'm just so close. I just can't remember if last time we just elected. I, to, yeah. I mean, centered is better, but does anybody actually care in a bedroom? And what window, is that a 4040? Yeah. So, you know, closet's opposite side. Personally, I don't think anybody cares about centered. Especially if you're only talking about like five inches. Yeah. Like if you were gonna go to that. I kind of am inclined to just. I don't think anybody will ever notice. So why don't I make this a so, king? So do, it, do another king. And I'll add a trimmer. Yeah, I think, I think that's the best. Okay, so let me relay this out now because of the, I'm gonna flip it over since they're inch and three quarter. I'll bet that's what we did last time. And that's, I have to cut that. Yeah, the doy. The doy. The doy, I'm gonna wait then. So basically, for stiffness of the wall, we just slid the window off-centered a little bit so that the kinks, double kink stud trimmer stays locked together as a unit with trimmer on each side. Yeah, and no one's ever gonna moment. notice that, so we feel comfortable making that decision. Pretty sure we did this the last three times.
king king trimmer. Trimmer. King. King. Trimmer. As you can see, we're going to need to add some framing down below so that those kink stud trimmers trace all the way to the foundation. inch and three quarters, I don't do the math. King, trimmer, whirl, whirl. Really? Oh. That is perfect. Yeah, that's good. That's good. So, one, two, so this is the section of wall that has straight top plates and then we're going to frame the rake on top of that and that ha all has to do with pick points. I'll get into that once the wall is framed, it'll make sense. And now it is time to start framing. So I'm going to go ahead and tack that plate down to the line all the way across. The toenails go on the framing side, not the opposite side. Some guys do it different but they tend to pull out. We are going to rely on these toenails to keep the wall from sliding off when we lift the wall. We've been doing this for a lot of years and it works great. I like to use the Passload XP nailer because there's no hose and I can just zip down this. Kyle's been laying some of the pieces in place, so I just don't want to be in the way where I have to drag a hose over it. Doug fur trimmers or? Doug fur for love. Kyle's already got the end stud calculated and cut. So that is the height of our wall, plus the heel stand of our rafter, or truss as the case might be, minus the bottom plate, minus the double top plates. I'm gonna link to an article in the description below that explains that. When it comes to the actual rake wall framing, our preference is to start with windows because oftentimes they're double king studs. I have two LSL full height studs right there. So I'm gonna nail those with two nails, about six inches to a foot on center. I don't get too particular about that. That's just a rough guideline. Remember, we want the, the two studs to act like they're one stud. I'm using the pass load nailer because LSL is notoriously dense. The pass load has enough power but frankly, it has more to do with the nail than the power of the gun. And pass load nails are extremely high quality nails. That's why they're not super cheap. Later, you'll see I'll switch over to the max high pressure gun because I can carry more nails. And at that point, I'm not really nailing doubled pieces of LSL together. Not bad, dude. One proud nail. Nice. You could build these on sawhorses. But because they're so long, they flop around and the nails don't set okay, as well. So this, this way I can stand on them and I can basically force everything to be straight. Plus, That's I like trimmer. not having a hose in this case. I hook it on my belt, okay. which stays more centered and, and it doesn't it drag. Now I'm gonna go ahead and nail the trimmer. This is for a bathroom window. So the trimmers go almost to the top because that little window needs to get above the fiberglass unit in the tub. It's a tub shower unit. They're always a little tall for our standard framing. So it'll be a four by six header. These pass load guns are not able to bounce fire. So you literally pull the trigger every time you want to shoot a nail. But as you can hear, that's not very slow. Not too bad, not too bad. I really like this gun. You pay a little bit more in consumables like the gas, but there is the ease. So we've got a couple of these and there's just certain times where I want them to come out. And this is one of them. Golly, that thing is heavy.
Good Lord. Yeah. That is ridiculous. Yeah. One thing to keep in mind is the fact that you're only holding one strip of nails at a time, so yeah. there is a lot more reloading. Yeah, annoying how often. But we save so much time on this wall, that is a very small trade-off in my view. We want the drywall side to be nice and smooth, so when I nail them, I can stand on them and I can make the drywall side smooth. So you'll see, I'll nail the bottom, then the middle, and then I'll work back to the bottom, and then I'll go to the top and work back to the middle. It's a little bit of back and forth. It's not very much. I don't think it matters. If you're one of those people that's trying to count steps, I don't think you're gonna be much faster, and it, it, everything's perfect. Maybe you will be faster, I don't know. I might be just too old to change. Now nah, it works. My, my, my thinking is this. Sometimes the way that the method you use or the method I use might technically be slower, but when we get really good at it, we get fast anyway. So I don't know. There's my philosophizing for this video brought to you by Menon. Have you figured out a big key to the success? Kyle is staying ahead of me. Basically, he wants me just to keep nailing. Keep my head down and nail. Okay. Okay, got it. They're so long that it's like. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. I'm like, hey, what am I doing wrong? Okay, so this is, yep, got it. I got it, brah. I forgot to mention, and I didn't show it, but layout starts from the back. We lay out to all of the long points. So 24 and three quarters to the long point, or if it's an LSL stud, then you have to go 24 and seven eighths to the long point, and then switch layout so that it's long stud when you get on the far side of the ridge. I like to use Doug fur for trimmers. Doug fur is about half the cost of LSL, or LSL is about double the cost of Doug fur. I don't see the value in making my trimmers out of LSL. That's why they're dug for. Save just a little bit of money where you can because we're spending a lot of money to build this big tall wall. And we're gonna save a lot of money on the labor. I know it drives some of you nuts that we do not have cripple studs under the sill at the trimmer. Our goal to is go to eliminate that. anything that doesn't benefit us structurally. So we are carrying a 25 foot glue lamb column. So it's five and a half by five and a half. It's made just like a glue lamb beam. I order it to go full height instead of ganging them together all the way to the ridge. You got a crown on this side. So do we want... I know, I was wondering, do you want the lambs vertical? Like a stud? For straightness or for... For yeah, strength for, or do, does it really matter? For stiffness. Actually, it's pretty straight. Just go with that? No, just go with that. Yeah, you can drop yours in and I'll push it. So the way it's laminated, it's like a bunch of two by sixes glued together, right? And so technically you would want those facing up, but I don't think it really matters. I don't know. Maybe I'll do some research on that. Your way? Yeah, can you come my way a little bit? Here's a pro tip. Notice that I'm pushing with my foot and I'm, then I'm using my okay. hammer. That little I'll bit of pressure sometimes it allows it to slide, but also not bounce back as the case might be. Are eight inch too long? Probably not. I don't think so. Or do you want me to use like five inch Simpson? Do you want a toe screw? Or end screw? I guess what what am I screwing? Oh here? Yeah. Yes. Got it. Misunderstanding what
while Kyle finds some eight inch timber locks to go right through that glue lamp column into those double top plates. Then I go and grab a 20 footer off the pile, put a bevel on it. That's going to be my top plate for the rake wall. And then just like the bottom plates, I'm gonna tack it to the line that we snapped on the floor. Look at me now. Yeah. Just something, yeah. Ten inch heel stand. Yeah. So the block. The block to the short would be six and nine. Okay. I can grab some screws for this. And you want the four by or the? I think that four by. Whatever's easy. Yeah. Nice, 1124, so we'll have the plates locked in. Yeah. Good enough. Can you hold the square on this side? And I'll try to, okay, I think that's gonna be pretty good. I'll put one more in because I got it. Cool. It's now the strongest part of the wall. Cool, if you hold me there. I'm gonna go 137 and 11. This is more of a bird's eye view, or should I say forklift's eye view, since the camera's on the fork. This view gives us a little bit more sense of scale. So the front wall was also built as a rake wall and you saw that laid over in the garage. Because when we lift this wall with the crane, we're gonna wanna drop that guy in place. And the back wall that you saw in the previous video is also off the side so that once we lift the big wall, we can then lift in the back wall and lift in the front wall and now we're, we're good and braced. Okay, so let's go back to this wall. Kyle's checking for square. We're getting the standard height section locked in. So that's two stories high. That 6020 was centered in the master bedroom. Here's that two by six 20 foot top plate with the bevel where I nail it to the end stud at the bottom left. I tack it to the ground. We've, we've taken into account all of our layout there. There's the top plate. Here's the other side of the top plate to the block you just saw. Screw to the plates. Now it is lunchtime. The scent came out. So here's how the wall looks. We are gonna take lunch and then afterwards lay out this bad boy and frame this all in. Good job, Kyle. So we're doing kind of Ben Morton style. Since that was flat to there, we're running it all the way through. It's timber locked back. Our pick point is gonna be over there. And then basically right here when it goes up. Standing strong forever. Nothing's gonna stop us now. If this 
out of mothers We'll still have each other Nothing's gonna stop us Nothing's gonna stop us uh... Here, what we start with Yeah, I don't either um... Probably the kings, eh? Now we're gonna lay out the raked section and we want the underside of the top plates where I am to be perfectly parallel to where Kyle is yeah, at the bottom good. plates. So he measures the horizontal numbers, enters that in his calculator with the roof pitch, and then just simply clicks diagonal. And that way I'm laying out across the diagonal or the rake will be perfectly parallel to each other. Remember, the wall was already squared and parallel and it's tacked to the line. Oh, yeah, after we do that, I have one change. Okay. 227.15, sharp of a double king. Okay. We like to start layout with all the king studs or double king studs because sometimes those land on layout, but the window can't move, right? It has to go where it has to go, so we lay that out first. This isn't the fastest way to do this. Yep. You could calculate it all to the map, but on a wall this big, I really like to be able to look at my tape measure and have confidence that I'm right on the money. Ah, I knew I was gonna do that. Two six two and fifteen. Two six two fifteen. Yep. Double king, double king, and then trim her down and trim her up. So this stud, let's change this guy. Let's go like maybe 12 inches off that line and then we can get backing in. And then we'll start our first sheet of layout. Okay. Of sheeting with like the, a two footer. Okay, yeah, that's what you're, yeah. Yeah, cause okay. then we can't get to that stupid cavity. Okay. But if we put the stud over here. Then, yeah, right. Then, yeah, like you wanna do it like, or even six inches off. Would you want, so, if that goes in, okay, because we have that. Yeah. So that's a, con so yeah, it basically has to be over here. And if you go six. Somewhere. Then they could still stuff insulation pretty easily. Like off? Yeah. Yeah. I should have done that. I mean, we talked about it and then I forgot it. I forgot it did. Are we marking layout? Uh, we'll finish one more king. Oh, okay. And then probably that guy. And then, uh, and then that one, yeah, the special stud. Ah, I can't get my tape not long enough. I can snag it. Uh, actually, you know what? We've never done this before, but what if we just go king to king and you just measure that horizontal? Six zero and one half. Yep. Single or double? It's single. Okay. So king down and trimmer down. Okay, so I'll give you the special stud and then the regular layout. Okay. One of the issues this house has is we have a two-story wall right at 16 foot, also king stud trimmers, and so it's impossible to get backing in there unless I move one of the layout studs off layout. So that's what we did, is we just slid it off layout. We already had the double king studs, so we had plenty of, um, plenty of strength from our studs, but that gives us room for sheetrock okay. backing and insulation. And uh, 16813. 16813. Okay, I'm just gonna do this. So to the long point, 168 and 13 sixteenths. That's the run, enter the pitch. If we lay out up the diagonal, we're gonna go 193.5. From that, since all of our layout is 24 on center, hit run, keep your diagonal, or keep your pitch, hit diagonal, 27 and a half, 
when you hit, uh, what is that, memory, store it, plus recall memory, that will keep account of all of the rounding. That probably didn't come through. <laughs> so 193.5. 193.5, okay. <laughs> okay. 27 and a half, 54, what? 15. Okay. 82, 7. 82, 7. 109.15. 109.15. 137.7. 137.7. 167. 16, 16, 4 and 7.8. 16, 4 and 7.8. You know how I know that your math is good? No. Because it lands on the seams. Oh. Word. Seven and a half. Which, okay, no. That one we're gone. Yep. yep. 54, 15. Uh, all right. 52 and 7. 109, 15. 109, 15. 137 137 I guess technically you could use this and store all your numbers too. How about 12 foot 11 and a quarter? Fourteen foot three quarters, fifteen foot two and two, sixteen foot three and seven sixteenths, seventeen foot five. The laser distance tool is great in the winter time when the floor is wet and you don't want to drag your tape measure through all of that water and dust and grime. But be careful with it. There is a learning curve. Seems like a lot of work. It is a lot of work, but it's productive. Kyle's gonna go ahead and just start cutting down all those studs, starting with the double king studs in windows. And then he's gonna manage his scrap and he's gonna work his way down. He's gonna fill in where that other rake is. Wait until the end of this video when you find out how many hours that from that first Instagram story at the beginning all the way through this wall being sheathed at the end of the day and taped. It's mind gobbling how much time we save. Like literally your mind will be gobbled by how little time this wall actually took to frame. Here's a major advantage of the coil nailer, right? A lot of nails, I can just keep rolling. It's better to use a few more nails at your top plates here. I'm nailing right over each stud with three nails and then add more nails on either side of any splits. Hit all of your king studs. We're framing this thing to lift, not just for its final resting place in position. One more night. Oh, why am I breathing hard? Well, that's good. You know, some of that LSL we can use upstairs. Yeah. 
like the long stuff. Yeah, totally. It might be worth using it up on that front if we make that one balloon. Just that little guy. Yeah. Hey, steady progress. This is all timber strand LSL. Yeah, now we're getting a sense of the scale. This is Kyle's scrap, by the way. Not bad. We'll be easily be able to use that up in windows. Good job, Kyle. Thanks, man. I earned high five to you. It's okay, now I'm hanging. Okay. Now it's time to start balake and then on to sheeting. Who wants to use scrap? I do. So we're gonna cut a bunch of that smaller LSL right in place. Remember I showed that technique before? No measuring. You use the saw and you cut everything by eye. Kyle's coming behind me and nailing. That block line is a couple feet up, whatever it is, because we're starting from the top of the second floor walls for a block line, then eight feet down, gives us a block line right at the top of the upper subfloor, and then eight more feet down, puts us right where Kyle's at, and then after the wall's up, we can go from that block line down to the mud sill. The blocking at the top, where it meets the ceiling on the second floor, that's gonna be four by six blocking. That helps us to keep our wall stiff. It also lines up with that standard height wall. And then that block line at the floor, at the second floor, will also be four by six. Again, that's just for stiffness. It's not required for fire, it's not required for structural, but we found that when we did this out of two by blocks, the, the wall flexed more than we liked, so we just used four by six. By the way, as you go, keep checking your layout because long studs can get squirrely, and you wanna make sure all your panel edges land on centers of studs. Okay, now, here's the drone footage. We're gonna sheet this entire wall and a bunch of you are gonna freak out. I know because you've been commenting on the other router video I did. We are not going to stagger any of the seams on our sheeting because we have backing behind all panel edges. Structurally, this wall only needs about eight sheets. It will have 25. So those of you that think you need to stagger, you really don't when it comes to shear. If your engineer asks you to stagger, Ask the engineer if you can just tighten your nailing spacing. I'm gonna put a link in the description below to a structural engineer's book on shear walls where he discusses exactly that. The important thing on shear walls is the size of the nails at the edges, well, really all of the sheeting nails, the spacing of the nails at the edges, and the thickness of the panel. So oftentimes, with no extra labor of trying to stagger sheets and stagger blocking, as the case might be, you can just tighten your nailing pattern with really no extra labor. So check with your engineer. This wall is going to be ridiculously strong because we have more than double the number of sheets that we need and more than double the number of nails that we need, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm the, I'm the pack mule. Remember, genetically, I'm just, I'm, I was born to be a pack mule. So I do the packing. Kyle's tacking everything, making sure that they all are centered on studs at the seams. I think you might have already seen me or you will see me trim one of them. You think things just get off sometimes and you, you kind of cheat. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill in with the two pieces at, at the other end. And Kyle's just gonna get started nailing. Hey, what happened to all of those windows? Well, allow me to show you in just one moment. This is the maiden voyage for a feature on my DJI Mavic 3 drone. If I draw on the touch screen of my phone, a box around myself, then the camera's supposed to follow me. And it actually did really well. I didn't have confidence, so I walked over to double check it. That's pretty trippy. I've zoomed in a little bit just because I kept it up nice and high to be able to see the whole wall. Okay, so what we're looking at here is I'm just using the router on the pole to route the top plates. 
As the pieces fall off, Kyle uses those wherever he can. Idiot proof. Some of you think that the router's slower. Yeah, it's true, the router itself is slower, but if we look at the whole process, we're able to get perfect edges without any snapping of lines, no measuring, and no like eyeballing the saw to make sure you get a nice cut. You just push it against and you go. So clockwise is the way that you go on windows. Now this particular window, I didn't remember that it was only a 4010, four foot wide, one foot tall. And I was like, what am I hitting? Oh yeah, it's a four foot by one foot window. <laughs> so, okay, when I said idiot proof, I mean basically idiot proof, right? Okay. So clockwise around the window. There's Kyle on the right hand side, filling in that other piece. He's tacking it, I'm gonna come back to that. Now I've got the 6020, but like an idiot, I went the wrong way. So, hey, Awesome Framers is just a joke. I mean, it was meant to be, it was meant to be satire. And then every once in a while, we do something where it's like, hey man, that was awesome. But not always. So that's why I went the wrong way with the router at first. But there, I got into rhythm, I got into rhythm. This was a, this was a tiring day. I'll put the story in that shows the timestamps on all this. So the 6020 window centered in the master. Now I'm heading over to the little window that will actually be in the shower, if I remember right. 2030. But anyway, you get the point. This is really simple. So remember, as we laid sheets, Kyle used his hammer like I did in a previous video, and you put a small notch. Otherwise, how would we know where the windows go? There's just that small notch big enough for a router bit. Now I can go back because Kyle wants to be able to keep nailing, so I want to route those top pieces off. When he nails the double top plate on a rake wall, he nails both plates six inches on center. That is probably overkill, but remember we're lifting, we're gonna lift this wall. Oh, well, we'll get into that in the next video. Start thinking to yourself, how much do you think this wall weighs? I calculated it, so we'll, uh, we'll compare numbers in the next video. And then last but not least is this 4-0 window. Kyle's looking at that piece in the top left wondering, should he use it for scrap there? Well, we're gonna come back to that in just a minute. The advantage of the router on the pole, I'm not bent over. And when you've spent this much time building a wall like this, it's the little things, it's the little things. Kyle's mission now is just to nail the wall off because we're getting close to quitting time. I'm gonna go ahead and fill in all the scraps, then I'm gonna blow the wall off because wherever he's nailed, I'm gonna go ahead and put the zip tape down because the next day we're going to side this wall. Since about half the wall's nailed off, I can go ahead and start taping the seams. So that's what I'm doing. Here's the technique for keeping your tape pretty straight. Straddle it, roll away from where you started, and about every four feet, press it down with your fingers. That keeps it stuck. Now come back and roll it. It's not perfectly straight but it's gonna look great from the road. It looks straight, so it's, it's, it's those little things, remember? We want it to look good to the neighbors, the inspectors, and the customers. Don't forget to roll this tape. It's an acrylic tape that is designed to adhere to those zip panels. And, it, and the two products work great together, but this entire system relies on rolling. And you can see I've rolled it nice and flat. You can see the glare there in the background. If you're gonna use this system, then take your time and do it right. Like everything, right? Like everything. Okay, so there it is. Horizontal tapes, uh, seams taped last. So it turns out that when the weather's good, <laughs> then we get stuff done. Big wall, big, big, big wall. We will hang windows, trim them, flash them, all that good stuff tomorrow. Probably snap our lines first and then hang and flash the windows and then trim and then metal drip edge and then side this bad boy. Good job, Kyle. Time to get out of here. Blow off the deck tomorrow. We're gonna come in and we're gonna start siding this, hang the windows, trim the windows, do all the soffits and get it ready for lift. How many hours total was this wall? Seven hours from the time that we actually started working on the wall. So tools rolled out, everything in position. Now we're gonna start seven hours, 25 sheets of zip. The thing is like 25 feet tall, 42 or 44 feet long. Yeah, not bad. And you saw, we did take some breaks. 
We shot some stories so we didn't murder ourselves. There's our obligatory picture. Thank you guys so much for following along. I really appreciate it. I hope it comes through. This, we don't really enjoy these walls per se, but we enjoy when they're done. And, and the feeling of production as it comes together really is, it's such a sense of accomplishment. So thank you for following along. Please hit that like and subscribe button. I really appreciate it. Welcome to the channel, all the new subscribers. It's great to have you. Um, please ask, ask questions below. I'll try to get to those. Thank you, everybody.